very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer on this the sixth Sunday of Easter. Um, we're very excited to tell you that our church is nearly ready for us to move back into. We'll be having our reveal um, on Thursday the 2nd of June on the evening and we invite as many of you who can come to look, come along and, and have a look at our beautiful church and how lovely it looks with all the all the alterations and of course we'll soon be able to move back into church for our services next week our morning service will be online as normal at 10 30 um, and it will also be in the school at 10 30. Um, next sunday is mission sunday and our readers mike and margaret keithley will be telling us all about their trip to malawi so that's quite exciting during the week of course on the thursday the 26th of may we celebrate ascension day and this year our cluster uh, churches will all be meeting at 7 30 for a service at lapworth church so we hope that you can come along then so let's start our service with prayer and please join in everything that's involved. Let us pray. God of light and life, you see all our problems and our pains. Help us to open our hearts and minds to you, to receive your healing and forgiveness and to learn how we can bring hope and healing to others. Amen. And our prayer of confession. Lord, you give us life. But there are times when we don't live the way you wish us to. When pain has a, us in its grip and we may give in to the gloom and pessimism. Forgive us when we see only the downside of situations. Forgive us when circumstances take over and moaning is easier than fighting. Dark times, Lord, sap our strength and courage and blind us to your light. Renew our strength to fight our way into your healing light. Forgive us and rekindle the light of hope in these dark times. Lord, that all shall be well. Amen. And our collect prayer for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Alfie is going to read us our Bible reading. This reading is from Revelation chapters 21 and 22. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour into it. On no day will its gates be shut, there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Alfie. I had a dream the other night about my garden. It was a sunny day and my garden was looking spectacular. The lilac tree was blowing delicately in the breeze, while the vibrant red of the roses stood out against the vivid green of the beautifully manicured lawn. Little hedge sparrows sat in the Mexican orange tree, waiting their turn on the bird table. Ripe plums hung down in the orchard. Even the olive tree was bearing fruit. 
I woke up, I got out of bed and looked out of my window, just in time to see a large deer nibbling the flowers off the pear tree. The squirrels had, once again, managed to pull the bird feeder down onto the lawn and Bill still hasn't cut the grass. Even so, my dream has inspired me. I know how things will look one day if I keep going and don't give up on the gardening. In our reading this morning from the book of Revelation, we hear of John's wonderful vision, a vision of hope for the world. He speaks of the healing of the nations, light triumphing over darkness, good over evil. Revelation was written late in the first century. The world then, as it is today, was a dangerous place to be. John, the beloved apostle, an eyewitness to Christ, has been exiled to the Isle of Patmos and he writes to the seven churches of Asia who are being given encouragement because they're suffering persecution under the Emperor Domitian. John writes to give them hope. He wants them to know that ultimately God is in control. All will be well. Notice that John sees no temple in his vision. The temple is the place where God dwells, the place where sacrifices are made, but there's no longer any need for sacrifice. In the presence of God, sacrifice is redundant and God is not confined to the temple. Now God lives with his people. There's no longer the need for the sun or the moon. God's radiance will provide the light. The tree of life, once denied Adam, is now given to all who depend on God. As the theologian Tom Wright puts it, it isn't that the new creation was an afterthought, plan B after plan A, made at creation, has gone so badly wrong. No, it's more that man's desire to follow his own route has meant that God's eventual destination has had to be arrived at by a long, winding, tear-stained and blood-splattered diversion. The most important blood and tears being spent by God himself in the person of the Lamb. We see in Revelation the goal is achieved by the power and sheer mercy of grace through which creation is not abolished but fulfilled, not thrown away and replaced but renewed from top to bottom. John's vision is of the new Eden, heaven and earth coming together the bride and the lamb, just as it was always meant to be. Mankind living in community with one another and with God, living in the wonderful creation, lit by the glorious light that comes from the throne. What a vision of hope to provide encouragement to us all of the ultimate triumph of God all will be well. Of course, visions are not restricted to the scriptures. In 1349, when the Black Death came to Norwich, a woman called Julian, 30 years old and so ill that it was thought that she was dying, had a series of visions. Julian's visions came in terrible times, times when male authorities were burning those who questioned the church's teachings. Yet Julian told and illustrated by her own life that God was at work with humanity. Her writings, 
the early surviving English language works by a woman inspired others. She paved the way at that time to a fairer society. Fast forward to the 20th century and in his last speech Martin Luther King also has a vision. He said that without a swift end to racial injustice the whole world is doomed. He said he, God, has allowed me to go up to the mountains and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you but I want you to know tonight that as a people we will get to the promised land. Martin Luther was assassinated the next day. He never got to the promised land he talked about but his legacy was to go on to influence the civil rights movement immensely. It's all too easy for us to become discouraged by all the problems we see, whether personal, political, worldwide problems. It's easy to forget the faithful promises of our God that in the end he has it covered. One day all will be well. In the meantime, how might we, we who are called to be God's light in this dark world, how might we exercise this commission? Could we, for example, this week be one small part of a solution to a problem somewhere? Can we use what we have, whether it's time, money, influence, patience, prayer, whatever God has given us to move the world one little step nearer to the world John sees in his vision. In the words of another well-known saying, it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. As Christians, we're called to light that candle. Amen. And now we're going to have a song from Uplifted. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble, see. Whoa.
and now we come to our time of prayer. God of all life and all goodness, we entrust to you those places where all is not well, places where there is deep-seated hatred and mistrust. We pray especially for Jerusalem, for the leaders and people of Israel and Palestine, for the people of Buffalo in America, and for all places where lives have been lost, where people are threatened by brutality and prejudice. We continue to pay for, pray for Ukraine and all countries being bombed and destroyed because of the ideology of other powers and leaders. We pray for all prisoners and all casualties of war. Where all is not well, Lord Jesus, please bring hope. Please bring healing. We pray for all those who are victimised, for their ethnicity, for their religion, for their sexuality. For those imprisoned for speaking out and protesting against corruption in Russia, in Belarus, in Hong Kong. We pray for the countries of NATO and for those applying to join, for all who seek out for peace and justice, for all who work behind the scenes to bring reconciliation, stability and restraint. Where all is not well, Lord Jesus, please bring hope, please bring healing. We pray for those places where lives are being lost to extreme temperatures, to floods and to drought, especially in India, Australia, across East Africa. We pray for place places where children are starving. We think of Afghanistan, the Yemen, Ethiopia. And we pray too for the hungry children in our own nation, where all is not well. Lord Jesus, please bring hope Please bring healing. We pray for all hospitals and workplaces, schools and homes, for those under huge pressures, for those who have no job security, for those who are bullied, for those who suffer behind closed doors. Where all is not well, Lord Jesus, please bring hope, please bring healing. Pray for those in the news whose lives are playing out before the eyes of the world. We pray for journalists to be protected, for truth to be upheld, for integrity to be the mark of all in public office and positions of influence. Where all is not well, Lord Jesus, please bring hope, please bring healing. And we pray for our church and the communities we serve. We pray for one another, for our families, for our neighbours, for our friends, for all who feel today sad, frightened and alone. Where all is not well, Lord Jesus, please bring hope. Please bring healing. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together by saying together as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now for our sending out prayer. Glorious God, you shine your light into the dark places of our lives and of our world. Gentle God, you touch us with your healing love and you make us whole. We ask you to be with us and shine through us this week and use us to bring hope and healing to others. Amen. And may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love now and always. Amen.